Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to Sports Talk 920. Got a lot of good stuff to talk about today. Of course, we have the whole kneeling for the national anthem. That's still, you know, a flavor of the month here. Kind of getting diluted from the original, the original, uh, I, I think, plot. But, hey, it's still going on. Um, week one of the NFL uh, we didn't do our uh, NFL preview show, unfortunately. Uh, schedules were conflicting there. Uh, but hopefully, uh, again, we can get Rudy on here. He's currently in a move process, moving into his uh, new home. So um, might be a few, few more weeks until we get Rudy back on here. Um, so there's that. Uh, we have college football on today. We have the battle at Bristol. Uh, I'm telling you, that field looks mighty tiny compared to where those seats are at. I mean, yeah, you see what you see at the at the racetrack, you know, on the outside right in front of you. But uh, you never really notice that, hey, you know, now we got to look directly at the middle of the field. It's going to be hard to see what's going on, I think. But, you know, I think it's cool now. I guess we'll talk, talk more about college football and what's, uh, what's happened in the past, too, in college football. And, and of course... Tonight is the last race in Richmond, Virginia here um, before the chase of for the chase to the Sprint Cup. Um, pretty much I, I think all things are decided. Uh, Ryan Newman who who after Darlington was a mere seven points back got penalized. now he's all the way back to being 22 points back. So he's got a long road ahead of him. unlikely that he'll be, making the chase, but he could still win tonight and get into the chase, so we'll preview more about that in a little bit. But first I want to start off with the, uh, again, the current flavor of the month, the the new trend of kneeling during the national anthem, and, and, and now it's, I don't know if it's turning into just if you have any any beef with America, you have to kneel. You know, first it was, you know, oppression by the police, and now it's like oppression between all minorities, and, and, and you know, it, it gets expanded. I don't think people really know what the what the agenda is anymore. You know, I, I've um, <clears throat> have, a, have, have a few very liberal friends here that, you know, I was posting something in 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 return of of the the Santa Clara police saying that they weren't going to work San Francisco 49er games, and he's putting all these things about, well, you know, the Star Spangled Banner has something to do with owning slaves. Which, if it's true or not, I don't really care. Um, it's you know, if we had a boycott, I mean, again, we're so totally side by the subject from what Colin Kaepernick originally knelt for, and that was about cops being able to be more trained, to be, you know, not racist, even though that's not true. It's just totally gotten off of a to It's totally derailed into, into um, its own little firestorm of a, a hell show that. That I don't think anyone really knows why they do it. It's just, it's just uh, the the social selfie, as I heard it was called. I do like that. It's just something where you can say, "Yeah, I was part of that. I knelt for the national anthem." Which I was listening to Steve Zabin's show, and, and he said, "Isn't kneeling almost more respectful than standing for the national anthem because you're more submissive to it?" That's a good note there too. But uh, anyway. Getting back on, getting back on the track here that I wanted to go on, but uh, the soccer player, woman soccer player, the, the girl who knelt, plays for the Seattle Women's Soccer League team. Uh, she knelt during the national anthem in one of her games. Can't remember her name. I, I don't care. I'm not even going to give her that much attention for it uh, to to say her name, I guess. But anyway, you know, she knelt for the national anthem. Then she was playing uh, the Washington soccer team, the Washington Spirit. And they decided to to have the uh, national anthem happen before the players came out. So there was to avoid people, you know, kneeling or, or being distracted during the national anthem. And, of course, she was upset 
because, you know, she didn't want to stand during the national anthem because she didn't want to hear this, this song, I guess, or, you know, again, what are you fighting this for? What are you kneeling for? You're not showing pride for your country. You're showing that this country has many flaws. And then she said they don't want these. And then the spirit said something about we don't want them to hijack the event. And then she, I think, distastefully throws the September 11th in there. So, I mean, again, it's it's getting to a point where, you know, I know there's, you know, we're totally getting a sidebar off the off of the the sports subject of the whole matter, but we're getting to the point where it's just people wanting to to get attention to them. You know, you're fighting for something. You don't know what it is, I don't think. I mean, really. I mean, honestly, if I had to, if I had to throw my two cents in on this subject, I do not think there's oppression in the United States. And, and you know, I I have that right to that opinion. I think there, um, there's racism. And I, I guess I should say there's there's no. Oppression between race. I think it's a lot of oppression between classes, social classes, or or financial classes, or whatever the the correct term is there. You know, if you're a poor white guy, you're a poor black guy, you're a poor Latino, you're not going to get the same opportunities as 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 a rich black person, as a, as a rich white person, as a rich Latino person. I think that's the bigger issue than. I don't see there there's any big thing with race because I I would argue that there there's a lot of reverse. You get a lot of these scholarships that are only blacks, a lot of scholarships that are only Native Americans. And and you know, yes, I know they're making make up calls, I guess, for the oppression that actually did happen in this country in the past, but you know, comes to a point where we all gotta kind of move on, move on together, and uh, and not be divided in everything, even a national anthem. It's ridiculous. You just got done with the Olympics. How would that? How would how would that have looked in Rio a few weeks ago? And none of these soccer players had the balls to do it then. They just do it now that it's the the social selfie. Well, we didn't know the cause back then. Come on. Have have a brain of your own to, to, to fight these causes if you think they're really there from day one. Don't be taking social, social, social selfies. Anyway, moving on um, to the uh, NASCAR realm of it quickly. Um, again, Martin Truex Jr. wins at, uh, wins at Darlington last Sunday. You know, he's got that, uh, prestigious race, I guess, the, the two, uh, crown jewel events, the, uh, excuse me, the Coca-Cola 600 and now the Southern 500 really probably should have even had a chance at, uh, you know, winning the Daytona 500 just lost by a bumper. Otherwise he'd almost pull off the. The old uh, million dollar bill sweep thing, you know, the Winston Million. But um, so that was that was pretty neat to see. Going into Richmond here, um, I think you're gonna see the Gibbs cars uh, probably be the ones that are gonna win the race. Um, I think they were fast there back back in uh, you know May when they they last raced here and uh, appear to be fast right now. Denny Hamlin on the pole. Kyle Busch, you know, I didn't even watch the Infinity race because it was the same old, same old there, but, um, you know, probably see the Gibbs cars up front again. But, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be good, good racing because, you know, even going back to Darlington last week, um, I will say that, that the race was, was pretty good. I think the race throughout was, was a very good, exciting race. Um, a lot of passing, you know, track was slick. It had that old Darlington feel. It was, it was pretty nice. It was pretty good. Um, of course we had the, the craziness that went down in the, in, in the truck race, 
um, between John Hunter Nemechek and, and Cole Custer. And to kind of give my hot take on that, um, you know, I know John Hunter Nemechek had, had, has kind of a history of, of, I don't know about being a little dirty or, or what it has you, but, but doing what it takes to, uh, to win. I don't know. I mean, watching that, I, I think people make it look a little bit worse than than it was. I'm gonna say that that John Hunter Nemechek. I, I mean, I think he intentionally kind of did what he did, and he did run him into the grass. And partly when going into that last corner, I guess what I'm trying to say, going into that last corner, I, I think he tried to do a crossover move, mistimed it, over uh, overran the corner, and maybe wanting to give Cole Custer a bump. And obviously Cole Custer shot towards the grass, kind of saved it. And I think if you see, I think you see John Hunter Nemechek kind of lose his car as well. And then slide it in the grass and then get into Cole Custer. And then I think that's where the, the craziness kind of ensued. I, I don't think he was intentionally going to run him into the grass and, and do what he did. I understand why Cole Custer is mad. I understand why a lot of people are mad. But I would maybe say it's not quite as as, as, a, as a kamikaze as, as you'd think. Plus, I mean... I agree with Justin Marks. I know people, a lot of racers were against his saying, his tweet saying, you know, racing is an entertainment. And, and, and that was an entertaining finish. You know, it would have been very anticlimactic if, if uh, you know, Cole Custer, granted, he would have qualified for the chase. A lot of fans would be happy for him. But it wouldn't have been as exciting of a finish. We wouldn't still be talking about this race, you know, years down the road. If he, John Hunter Nemechek didn't do what he did, it, it it's it's one of those things where you know you don't like someone taking someone else out because I, I think Cole Custer has probably more of the fan base because right now he has Junior Motorsports on his truck. Um, and. And John Hunter Nemechek, I mean, I think he's, I think he's fairly popular between a little bit more of the diehard fans in in the sport, but but really, you know, Joe Nemechek really not that big of a name in the world of of NASCAR, so or outside of NASCAR, sorry that that uh, you know his son would be that recognized. So I think that because then you know if that was reversed, if that was if that was you know. Dale Hart Jr. doing that to Kyle Busch to win a race at at uh, Sears Point. I guarantee you, people would love it. I mean, the majority of people. I, you know, the people will still, people I still think will have their beliefs and and hold true to them. I'm not saying everyone is in this category, but I just have a feeling it it's it, it's it's not the cleanest way to win a race. It's probably maybe not the, even the most honorable. But I don't know if I would would hold it against John Hunter Newcheck that much because I don't think it was as deliberately premeditated, I guess, as, as people think. Did he make contact with him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, we'll see what happens uh, between those two. It should be interesting. It should it should make it real interesting because it will be and, and the further entertainment of it because you know on the flip side here too, you know Cole Custer, you know this kind of goes back to me. Sorry too that totally sad about it. The people that were um, Dale Earnhardt's back then, you know they hated him because he he spun people out. But when they returned the favor, they loved it. Well, even if he had what was coming, do you really 